2 Kings chapter 22, we're going to read the first two verses. I found these verses to be just thrilling and yet perplexing. Verse number one, the Bible says, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adia of Boscath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Thank you for the good singing. We enjoyed the singing. Lord, we're glad you're the master of the sea. God, we're glad that even though we may face billows and waves and the Lord uh, may face hardships in this life, we're headed home. One of these days, uh, the sufferings of these present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. The hardships of this life won't even be a memory when we see you as you are. And Lord, we're thankful for our blessed hope tonight. And God, we're thankful for these that came out. We're thankful for all the good testimonies. We're thankful, Lord, you're a God that hears and answers prayer. And God, we're thankful you neither slumber nor sleep. And God, we're thankful, Lord, you are for us and not against us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And Father, we're thankful to be able to come once again, open the Word of God, look into the perfect law of liberty, and find hope and strength and joy and peace. And so, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. As Brother Ray's already prayed, we're looking forward to hearing from the Word of God. And so, God, I pray you'd speak to hearts. Uh, I pray that, God, you'd help those, you'd comfort those that need comfort, uh, strengthen those that are weak. Uh, Lord, uh, lift up that one that may be low tonight. Uh, Lord, uh, give the answer to that one that is seeking tonight. And we certainly pray, uh, Lord, if there be any amongst us tonight, unsaved, lost without God, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Get glory to your name. Use this unworthy vessel. Father, we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. Uh, I find uh, this perplexing because we find uh, uh, a king of Judah by the name of Josiah. Notice that he reigned. Uh, and the Bible says in verse number 1, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, uh, and he reigned thirty and one years into Jerusalem. Can I say this? Most eight-year-olds have to be told to brush their teeth. Huh? Most of them don't. You, you can't get them out of bed. You can't get them to do any work. Can't get them to do any chores. Uh, here's an eight-year-old boy that becomes king uh, in Jerusalem, king of Israel. Now that perplexes me. No, oh, it doesn't perplex you. You're used to eight-year-olds calling the shots. Oh, I forgot. That's why some of you parents parent today. Hmm? Uh, whatever the kid says goes. Well, but that perplexes me that an eight-year-old is the ruler of a nation. Now, we got an 80-year-old that acts like an eight-year-old, but that's a whole other message. Mm -mm. Now, can I say this about Josiah? His reign was significant, but it was not without guidance. Notice what the Bible says that he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adia of Boscath. Now, it's very important to our study, if God mentioned his mother and his grandmother, they were very significant in his life, uh, and they were uh, helpful in guiding him uh, until he was of age to be able to run the country the way it should have been run. Now, notice some things. You know I love names. When you study the Bible and you come across the name, the name is very significant about the character of the individual. If uh, they got to be 30 years of age and their uh, name did not fit their character, they changed their name. So I'm interested in these names. Uh, the name Josiah means Jehovah healeth. That's very important because uh, 
the two kings prior to him uh, 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 led Israel into serving false gods uh, and led Israel to have uh, 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 a bout with serving Belial uh, and uh, offering up their own children as sacrifices, uh, all kinds of wickedness, uh, all kinds of idol worship, uh, all kinds of uh, 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 things that displease God, uh, and yet God uses an eight-year-old boy to heal the nation. Uh, Jehovah healeth. Notice his mother, uh, Jedidah. Her name means beloved of Jehovah. Mm, she was beloved of Jehovah, God loved her, God blessed her womb, and God used the fruit of her womb to heal the nation. But can I say, his grandmother's name, Adiah, means Jehovah has adorned. Can I say, aren't you glad that uh, God's adorned you with grace, uh, with mercy, with love, uh, with joy, uh, with peace, uh, with long-suffering, uh, with gentleness, goodness, meekness, uh, temperance. Uh, what a blessings for the fruit of the Spirit that God has adorned us. And because God adorned her, she raised a daughter that was the beloved of, Je of Jehovah, and then she has a grandson uh, who goes on to be used to heal the nation of Israel. We see that Josiah reigned. Can I say something else about this young man or this king? He did right. Look in verse number 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Hmm? I don't know about you, but when this thing's done, it'd be well spoken of us if God says we done what was right. Hmm? It's easy to do what's not right. But it takes some character to do what's right. This young man did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He reigned, he did right, but notice he also rehearsed. Look in verse number 2 again. It says, And he walked in all the way of David his father. He walked in the way of David his father. Now that's very important. He rehearsed. He did what David did. Now David was a man after God's own heart. If there's anybody you want to pattern yourself after, it's somebody who walks after God. Right. Now, this is why you need to study your Bible. Read verse 2 with me again. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of David. Now, what's the next two words? His father. Now, I want to caution you right now. David was not his literal father. David was his great, 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 many great grandfather. Matter of fact, David had been dead for over 300 years before Josiah was born. You see, God looks at a heritage and a lineage as a part of something. My dear friends, David begat Solomon and on down the line. Let me give you the lineage. Josiah's father was Ammon. Ammon was a wicked king. He only reigned two years. And then Ammon's father was Manasseh. He too was very wicked. Hmm? Then there was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great king. Until he got satisfied and that he was going to get to live another 15 years and he let the enemy come and steal the treasures out of the house of God. Then there was Ahaz, another wicked one. Jotham, Uzziah, Amaziah, Joash, uh, Ahaz... Uh, 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 this one's a hard one. A-H-A-Z-I-A-H. -A -A -H. Ahaziah, or something like that, some Jewish name. Jehoram, Jehoshaphat, another good one. Asa, one of my heroes, loved Asa. Asa uh, 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 once served God so much, he put his mother out from being queen because she was an idol worshiper. Uh, then there was Abijah, uh, Rehoboam, uh, Solomon, and David. How many generations that is uh, before you get to Josiah? Uh, but God looks at the lineage. He looks at the heritage. Uh, that's important, you and I, uh, uh, because if you look at the lineage of Christ uh, 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 and who begat who and who begat who and who begat who, and then it comes down to and Mary begat Jesus... Uh, 
Now I got in my Bible there, Matthew, uh, and Jesus begat me. Uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, when the Lord looks at heritage, He looks at Jesus Christ. Uh, and you and I that have been born again, uh, He looks at us in the heritage of Christ. Uh, and He sees Christ when He sees us. Uh, just like He saw David when He saw Josiah. Mm, he rehearsed. Mm, walked the ways of David. But then notice He was resolved. Look at verse 2 again. Said he turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. He stayed right on the middle of the path of righteousness. He didn't go right. He didn't go left. He walked right where he was supposed to walk. In other words, he began well, he continued well, and he finished well. Boy, if, I, if you ought to have a testimony... What a testimony that you began well, you continued well, and you finished well. Hmm? I'm interested in verse number 2 tonight where it said, uh, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I want to preach with God's help for just a few minutes tonight on doing right in the sight of the Lord. You know, we're so concerned about what people think of us. We're concerned about what our peers think about us. Uh, we're concerned about uh, uh, folks on the job and what they think about us. We're concerned about what our family thinks about us. Uh, a lot of preachers are scared to death to say anything against the government because we're concerned about what the government thinks about us. Uh, and we're concerned about uh, what this official thinks and what this official thinks and who, what this person thinks and what this person thinks. Uh, we're concerned about what our neighbors think. Uh, how come we're not concerned about what God thinks? Uh, uh, friends, we ought to have something within us uh, uh, that causes us uh, to want to do what's right in the sight of the Lord. Uh, uh, we ought to want to please God. Uh, hey, uh, 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 did not Peter said it's better to obey God than man? Uh, hey, uh, what happened to those kind of Christians? Uh, got backbones like so logs. Uh, said, I'm just going to do what God says. Uh, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, uh, say what you want to say about me. Uh, uh, but if God says uh, when it's all said and done, well, no, no good and faithful servant uh, nothing else matters uh, we ought to strive to do what's right in his eyes because uh, his eyes are the only ones that count uh, doing right in God's sight and I say in order to do right in God's sight first of all you've got to be instructed you can't do right by God if you don't know what God expects from you the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, uh, the same commit thou to faithful men, uh, who shall be able to teach others also. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, uh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, uh, friend, if you're going to do what's right in God's sight, uh, uh, friend, you've got to be instructed. Uh, you've got to be taught the Bible. Uh, uh, you've got to study the Bible yourself. Uh, hey, it's a blessing to read it. Uh, it's another thing to study it. Uh, you've got to understand what God thinks about things, uh, what God's for, uh, and what God's against. Uh, and you've got to be instructed in the ways of righteousness. Uh, that's why we have Sunday school. Uh, that's why everything we do around here uh, from kids club uh, all the way to Wednesday night prayer meeting uh, we're preaching and teaching from the word of God uh, so that folks know what God thinks about things uh, so we can be right in the sight of God uh, listen we don't give you philosophy we don't give you what the convention thinks we don't give you what uh, uh, people think about being popular well brother Doug you might offend people uh, if you preach the Bible. Uh, friends, uh, if they get offended, uh, hopefully they get under conviction uh, and they get right. Uh, but I'm not backing up. God's been good to me for a long time. Uh, hey, uh, I got saved under this blessed old book and the preaching of it. Uh, I'm going to preach it. Uh, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. Uh, I'll shout it from inside a jail cell. Uh, hey, I'm here to tell you God's worth living for. Uh, and there's only one way of doing things and it's His way, my dear friends. Uh, but you've got to be instructed. The dangerous thing, Brother Clint, is folks that have sat in church for 30 years and don't know anything about the Bible. 
Hmm? They don't know uh, about the teaching of it. If I had just said tonight, turn to the book of Habakkuk. Man, some of you have been struggling. You've been in the front of the Bible looking for what page that was on. Huh? You know why? Because you don't know where it's at. You ought to know where the books of the Bible are. Hmm? When another preacher's preaching, I'm sitting back there, usually whoever in front of me, they'll say, turn to the book of Job. I'll say, that's in the Old Testament, just being a smart aleck. Huh? Folks don't know their Bible. You know why? Because they don't study it. And while they're sitting in church, they're not listening. Mm -mm. They're here, but their mind's out there. You're not walking right in the sight of God. Because mm, you're not being instructed. Listen, in God's economy, there's no big eyes and little U's. We're all got the same playing field. We all got the same Bible, if you got the right one. Mm? And God is going to judge us all from His book. And God expects each and every one of us to have a steady diet of His Word, to learn of His Word, and walk in His Word. Uh, I preached not too long ago about not letting any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. And yet I've heard people that come to church who use four-letter words. Mm -mm. Let me just say this. Let me pick on Brother Charlie. You're going to be glad you, you was off tonight, brother. If you can't say it in here, you don't need to say it out there. Hmm? Uh, you're welcome. Hmm? Uh, you say, well, I got mad. Well, the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. We're only talking about being right in the sight of God. You know, it's not, it's not a sin to be angry. It's a sin to be angry and act on it. Hmm? Hey, preacher, what are you talking? I'm trying to instruct you in the ways of righteousness so you can be right in the sight of the Lord. You've got to be instructed. Can I say secondly, if you're going to do right in God's sight, you must implement some things. You must carry out and do some things. It's one thing to hear the Word of God. It's another thing to be a doer of the Word of God. If God says, thou shalt not, you better not. If God says, thou shalt, you better. Hmm? Uh, it amazes me how many people have no problem with thou shalt not murder. They have no problem with John 3.16. But they do got a problem with Malachi chapter number 3. Three people in here know what that deals with. Huh? That deals with bringing all your tithes into the storehouse. Uh, see, you get, you, get on, you get on people's uh, not being right in God's sight when you get on their pocketbook. Mm -mm. Uh, but that's God's economy. Uh, we're all to pay our tithes and bring an offering to the house of God. Mm -mm. But yet there are some who don't do that. You're not right in the sight of God. Hmm? And can, can I help you something? If you're here tonight, you're one of them, and I don't know who gives and who don't give, so don't, don't be looking at me like I'm picking on you, okay? Let me pick on Donald over here, just because he's here. If you don't tithe, that's a good reason why you're struggling. Hmm? Yeah. That's, that's why you're always in want. That's why you never can make ends meet. You don't take care of God's house. Why should you be concerned about your house? Hmm? And what are you teaching these kids? Huh? It's okay to rob from God. I wouldn't do it. Hmm? You ask Miss Annette. We go on vacation. We pay our tide check ahead of time. If I die, I don't want to meet God owe any money. Huh? That's just what we do. So, oh, you're meddling now, Brother Doug. Oh, no, I'm doing some good preaching right now because you're upset. Uh, uh. It amazes me how people have no problem giving the government their percentage. 
And the government wants a whole lot more than God requires. He only wants a tenth and an offering. Hmm? I would to God the IRS only took a tenth. We'd shout it out. And by the way, they don't wait till you go and, and get your groceries, pay all your bills, and then uh, go uh, uh, out to Sonic on Friday night. And uh, uh, whenever you got left, you give a tithe on that. No, 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 no. The government takes it right off the top. And that's where God ought to get his, right off the top. Hmm? Huh? You say, pray to your medal. No, I'm trying to get you blessed. Huh? Because he said, prove me now. If I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Hey, uh, he gives it shake, uh, pressed down, shaking, bubbling over is what God does. Uh, you can't outgive God. Uh, hey, uh, I've tried it. The more you give him, uh, uh, the more he just blesses. Uh, uh, it's not always bit blessings in monetary things. Uh, a lot of times your shoes wear longer, your clothes wear longer, uh, your washing machine goes longer, uh, your tires go longer. Uh, hey, uh, a lot of times uh, you go from eating chicken to eating steak. Uh, I'm telling you, God's a good. Uh, you can't outgive him. Uh, he said, prove me now. Uh, hey, tithing is a faith thing. Uh, hey, friend, if you learn to just trust God, uh, you'll see how big a God he really is. Hallelujah. Huh? He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Sometimes he gives it back to you, a cheeseburger at a time. But I'm here to tell you, he's faithful and true. David said he'd never seen the righteous uh, seeds begging uh, or forsaken. And I want to tell you something. You can't be righteous if you're not tithing. That's nowhere in my notes. All I got to implement means carry out or do. So you're welcome. Uh, means to do what you hear from the scriptures put them into practice apply them heed to them uh, you hear something preach you ought to run to do it hmm? God says you ought to get in the altar you ought to run to get in the altar God says you ought to love your neighbor you ought to run to love your neighbor God says you, you got an ought against a brother getting straightened out. You ought to run to get that thing straightened out. Uh, 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 you ought to long to be right in his sight. Can I say, if you're going to be right in God's sight, you've got to be instructed. You've got to implement what you're taught. But then you've got to be insistent. You've got to be tenacious or persistent. You've got to be that song we sang, be resolved, insistent. I'm just going to live for God. We've got too many yo-yo Christians. Up, down, in, and out. It amazes me how many people make excuses not to be faithful to the things of God. I'm glad God's more faithful than we are. How'd you like Him just cut all oxygen off for about 35 minutes? We'd all be brain dead. He's faithful regardless of us. Hmm? But he commands us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We need to be insistent. It amazes me how many folks will never miss work, but they have no problem laying out of church. Do you know who gave you your job? God. Hmm? Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd lay out of work for I'd lay out of church. We can make excuses all the time. Matter of fact, Miss Tara, Miss Arla, for my birthday, gave me a CD. It's got that song on there, Excuses. Excuses. We hear them every day. The devil will supply them. If from church, you'll stay away. Huh. Amazes me how many excuses people got to why they can't be faithful. Hmm. You know what excuse is? It's lies wrapped around words. No, you choose not to be faithful. Thank God for those that are insistent. They're going to just serve God. Preach it tonight. I'm just going to go on for God. Thank God for those that just made up their mind. I'm just going to go on for God. Just be faithful. Be insistent. Uh, you say, Brother Doug, there's a pandemic. Yeah, there's a pandemic. It's called sin. There's a cure. His name is Jesus. 
And if we aren't insisting on telling the world and being faithful to keep the doors open, how are they going to hear? We need to be insisting if we're going to do right in God's sight. I promise you this, neighbor, 100 years from now, because I don't know when Jesus come, could come tonight, but 100 years from now we'll all realize we didn't pray enough, we wasn't faithful enough, we wasn't serious enough, we wasn't committed enough, we didn't do enough. So why don't we just make up our minds starting tonight, we will. We'll just be insistent. If you're going to be right in God's sight, can I say this? You need to be insightful. He started reigning at eight years old, and he reigned 31 years. Now, don't tell me in 31 years he didn't have some Pharisee come and try and put a bug in his ear to get him to do something that wasn't the will of God. But he was insightful. He didn't go to the right or to the left. He walked in the ways of David, his father. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because he was insightful. In other words, he didn't have his head buried in the sand. You know why most churches got caught off guard last year? They had their heads buried in the sand. They just assumed they'd come to church like always. Hmm? You know why America's reeling right now? We've had our head buried in the sand. Can I say, all that is going on in our country didn't happen overnight. It's been taught in our colleges for about 30 years now. A lot of this stuff that's going on and a lot of the philosophies, this progressive movement heading us towards socialism, then communism, uh, it's all been a plan. But see, we haven't taken voting serious. We haven't protected the vote. We haven't put the right people in office to make sure they would. We haven't voted out guys like Mitch McConnell's been in there almost 40 years and done nothing but got rich. I can't understand. Explain this to me. Somebody that's smarter than me, that's good with numbers, explain this to me, how somebody can go into office and get paid $144,000 a year and get out of office and be a multi-billionaire and got million-dollar mansions all over the globe. Explain that to me. Huh? Did they steal it from the taxpayers? No, they got it given to them from the lobbyist. Say, what are you trying to say, preacher? It didn't happen overnight. All of my adult livelihood, I've heard that we've got to stop the soft money being paid to politicians in every election cycle. They'll say, we've got to stop this PAC money. We've got to put an end to this. But they never do because we don't hold them accountable. Because as long as we get to go to the grocery store, as long as we get to go to the gas station, as long as we get to watch sports, as long as we get to watch our shows, as long as we got a job, as long as we got food in the cupboard, as long as nobody's breathing down our neck, we're okay. We're just like the church at Laodicea. We're increased with goods and think we have need of nothing. And that's what's happening in our churches. As long as we could come to church, as long as we could stand up and say King James Bible is the Word of God, as long as we could sing from the old songbooks, uh, as long as we could shake hands, uh, as long as we could just do our thing and nobody bother us, we's fine. The problem was we wasn't bothering them. We haven't been insightful. You say, what are you talking about being insightful? Well, you've got to use some discernment what amazes me about what's going on right now in America, really the world, is how many people that sit in churches and don't see it. I had a preacher call me yesterday, just out of the blue, called me and just said, Preacher, I want to thank you. I've been listening to your preaching uh, uh, for over a year now on the Internet. I want to thank you for standing true. I want to thank you for exposing what's going on in this world. I want to thank you for just make, being a, a, a pillar that God's using. Just keep it up. I thought, wow. All I thought I was doing was preaching. Uh, but people don't get it. They don't understand. 
Follow the money, friends. Do you know why they're mandating a vaccine? Because Pfizer and Moderna have paid these politicians to tell you that. Do you know earlier this year Pfizer was making $212 million a day? They just caught the president of Australia. You think it's bad here. Australia's really had it bad. People started rising up and rioting against the government. The president resigned. I thought, hallelujah, what a blessing. You know why she resigned? Because she got caught taking bribes from Pfizer and Moderna. The problem is, is we've had them get caught here in America and we don't hold them to the fire. Hillary was caught destroying evidence. Nobody cares. Hmm? Clinton was caught. Obama was caught buying back guns and giving guns to the Mexican cartels. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the rule of law, but we're supposed to be a nation of laws. They all get paid off and they all make money and they pass these trillion dollar bills and they're uh, uh, our great 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 grandchildren's going to be paying for all the stuff that they're making money on. We don't discern it because as long as we can go to Kroger and as long as we can come to church and as long as we can go down the road, well, I got news for you. Friend, if somebody doesn't stand up and make a stand, you're not going to be going down the road without a jab. You're not going to get on an airplane without a passport that says that you have obeyed their commands. The same thing Nazi Germany did. If you didn't have papers, you didn't get to go net and down the street. We're headed that way. We're headed that way. Uh, you don't remember because you didn't study history because you hated history. They burnt the Bibles in Nazi Germany so people didn't have the truth. Can I say last year they said the church was non-essential and many churches said, nope, we can't go against the government. I've got news for you. Won't be long they're coming after your Bibles. The only reason they haven't yet is because there's 440 million gun owners in America. But I'm telling you, there's legislation right now to do away with them. They're trying everything they can to strip you of your inalienable rights that our forefathers put in the Constitution that we would rise up against this tyranny. But we're laying down like sheep because we're not discernible. We've not been insightful. We don't discern what's going on. So many people just don't see it. Really? The government's bad? I read something the other day. So this is what the government's good at. Spending your money, wasting money, and killing people. That's all they're good for. Do you know this? And I heard this while I was up in Boston. The reason they quit teaching history is, though, is because kids don't know their rights. Do you know this? The government works for us. And a mandate is not a law. Hmm? Don't know where any of that came from. You shouldn't have got me on tithing. I'd have never got on the government. Need to be insightful. Using discernment. For to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We're harmless and ignorant. Mm -hmm. He was insightful by being dependent. He had to depend on his mother and his grandmother. He also had to have some uh, people in a cabinet that gave him good counsel. But most importantly, because he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, he depended on God. I'm sure he had uh, the high priest on speed dial. I wonder. 
we're so independent that we've lost being dependent on God. Mm. Every day I tell the Lord, Lord, without you I can do nothing. We've got to depend on God. We can't take some measures into our own hands. Not if we're going to be right in the sight of the Lord. But there are some things we can make stands against. Need to be insightful, use discernment, be dependent. Being insightful also means being disciplined. If you're not going to go to the right or the left and stay right in the middle of the road with the Lord, you're going to be disciplined. I got news for you. On any given Wednesday or Sunday, your flesh is not going to feel good. But you've got to be disciplined to put your flesh down and be faithful to the things of God. On any given month, it might get tight. And you can think, well, I won't pay my tithes this month. I'll catch up next month. You won't ever catch up. You've got to be disciplined. What's more important? God gets his first. Hmm? By the way, if you prove him, you never do without anything. Say, well, I'll, 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 I'll do without this to pay my tithe. You, you won't do without, trust me. God's good. But you've got to be disciplined to put God first. Insightful. Thought about this. If we're going to do what's right in God's sight, we've got to become influenced, biased, narrow minded. I'm influenced by the Bible. I'm influenced by truth. You know why Americans are falling for everything the government says? Because we don't want truth. We get all of our information from little 30-second sound bites. Watch local news, watch national news. Watch, they all got the same talking points. They're all handed down. They all say the exact same thing. Hmm? There is no reporting anymore. I feel sorry for these kids. They'll never know what a Walter Cronkite was. He just reported the news. They'll never know what those reporters that used to go into the war zones and report what was going on at the wars and report truth, good, bad, and, and the ugly. They reported the truth. But when all the president's men came into play, all of a sudden now all journalists want to get the story doesn't matter if truth is involved or not. They'll embellish the truth to get the press and become famous like grouchy Fauci. You, the truth's out there, friends. You've got to search for it. You've got to read. People don't want to take time to read. You don't read your Bible. You don't want to read to find truth. There's a lot of truth out there. Right now, China's about ready to take Taiwan. Taiwan cannot defend herself, and China is not afraid of America. Would you be afraid of Joe Biden? Joe Biden told you that the military was, was all for pulling out of Afghanistan and leaving it like the way that we did. And two generals testified before Congress yesterday and said, no, we warned him not to. You realize there are still Americans in Afghanistan being tortured tonight. Christians are being tortured there. And China looks at that and they say, he don't even take care of his own. We're not afraid of him. You did hear that last week North Korea fired a missile over Japan, didn't you? Did you hear what Joe Biden's administration said? Said, well, it, it really didn't cause any harm. Well, the next one might. And by the way, Kim of North Korea has said that they have the capability to launch a missile that hits the United States of America. Trump was ending all of that. Now he's firing it back up. I'm just trying to tell you, you've got to read to understand. You say, what does all this mean? All this means we're headed to Armageddon, which means the church is out of here. We need to get our loved ones under the gospel. 
get our neighbors under the gospel. We need to get serious and get revived, friends, uh, uh, because this thing's coming, and we've got to get narrow-minded on this thing. Progressivism's fallen into Christianity. Brother Doug, what's wrong with having a rock band? Nothing if you're the Eagles. But we're not the Eagles, we're church. Kids Google the Eagles. They were great in the 70s. Uh, you could understand what they said, too, when they sang. Uh, anything that has rap attached to it, if it's not Reynolds rap, it's wrong. Thought I'd throw that in there. Brother Doug, what's wrong? Let me help you something. If you've got to ask what's wrong, then it's wrong. If you want to know what's right, get in your Bible. Hmm. You know why we sing hymns and spiritual songs and sing the Psalms? Because read Ephesians chapter 4. It's what it tells us to do. Hmm. You say, why do we have to have preaching? Because Paul said, preach the word. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. We're not backing up from that. Mm -hmm. Bible, and, and preaching also exposes error and falseness. Some of you wouldn't know anything in the world that's going on in this world if you didn't come to hear me rant on it every now and then. Mm -hmm. We've got to become influenced by righteousness. Mm -hmm. Let me say this lastly. Well, maybe not lastly. I'm feeling pretty good. How do we stay right in God's sight? We've got to be involved. You must become involved. You've got to be active. You've got to be attentive. You've got to be accountable. No man lives unto himself. No man dies to himself. We've been fitly framed together. We are all, if you're a member of this church, God has put us here together to pull the load of this ministry to get the gospel out to be an impact in this community and when you're not pulling your load that means you're putting a strain on others to pick up your load for you we're accountable one to another and I will say this lastly if you're going to be right in God's sight you've got to be infatuated just be infatuated with Jesus just want to hear more about him just want to talk to him, just want to fall in love with him, just he can do no wrong in your eyes because he's altogether lovely, but be infatuated with him. People are infatuated with all kinds of things. Christ most of the time isn't one of them. We're infatuated with all kinds of things, things that have our attention, have our heart, have our desires. How about Christ? All he did was die for you. Loved you when you was unlovable. Why can't we be infatuated with him? Hmm. The old hymn writer wrote, More and more about Jesus, would I know? Hmm. Hmm. We ought to be infatuated. Hmm. I love that song you used to sing to Sydney as a baby. Oh, how I love Jesus. Hmm. I'd be infatuated. We ought to have our heart. By the way, if he's got your heart, he'll get the rest of you. Those, Brother Jim, they don't have their pocketbooks because they don't have their heart. Real simple. Huh? Those, Miss Mary, that he don't have their voice because they don't have their heart. Those that have given Jesus their heart, they have no problem telling others about him because he has their voice as well. Let me ask you a question. If the Lord was to come back tonight, are you right in his sight? Because regardless if he comes back or not, he's looking. Are you right in his sight? This little two-verse passage excited me, and perplexed me, because there's an eight-year-old boy that was right in his sight. And he never veered. He just stayed there. Man. And he 
you want to really know what perplexes me, Brother Tommy? He didn't have a Bible, and he didn't have the Holy Ghost indwelling him. And he was right in the sight of the Lord. We've got the Bible. You're saved. You have the Holy Ghost indwelling you. Are you right in the sight? God help us. I want to do right in the sight of the Lord. I fail him so much, but I want to do right in the sight of the Lord. How about it tonight? Are you right in the sight? You can be. You can walk with him and talk with him. Be right where he wants you to be. Matter of fact, the only thing keeping you from being right in his sight is you. It's me. The reason we got to give an account of ourselves to the Lord is when we stand before him, we can't point the finger at anybody else. So you know what would be good tonight? You just start pointing the finger where it needs to be pointed. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. And when you admit that it's you, then you can get right in his sight. And friend, you don't have to veer. You can stay there. But it all depends on us submitting our will to his will. Us walking in his ways. Us desiring him. Us longing be in the center of his will. Let's all stand tonight. Miss Tina, why don't you come to the piano? Brother Clint, why don't you come pick out a song of invitation? I don't know. All I do know is I want to be right in the side. How about you tonight? Starts with telling him, Lord, I want to be right in your side. I want you to be pleased with my life. There are folks coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, there's so many times we're not right in your sight. Lord, forgive us of our ineptness. Forgive us of our wickedness and our sin. Forgive us of being fleshly, being proud. God, help us. Give us a desire to want to be right in your sight. Lord, you've been so good to us. You're so long-suffering. Lord, you're full of tender mercy and kindness. Creating us a desire to be right in your sight. Lord, there's some already in the altar, some praying in their pews. Lord, just bless this invitation. God, if there's somebody here tonight not saved, I pray they'd get saved. If there's somebody here that's saved and they don't know any more about the Bible than two days after they got saved, Lord, help them to come get in the altar and be instructed of thee. Have a desire for godly things. Lord, create in us a, a passion for the things of God. But Lord, we'll not be walking around with our head buried in the sand, but we'll be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our fight. Now, Father, bless now. Bless this invitation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.